Hello and welcome to the show. I'm here today on automation, going to be, well, building a highly requested vehicle, ready for the big automation and beam crossover that is going to be happening very shortly. I'm going to build a V8 front wheel drive hatchback. Along the lines of the jokey V8 Saxo we had. I think they actually started on production line, the hatchback having the V8 V8 looking engine and Saxo being a infamous fail rate hatchback. So yeah, we're gonna have a go at building a V8 front wheel drive powered hatchback. Now, I have got some various cars still saved from from my time of playing automation of late things like the front wheel drive supercar, uh, the ultimate getaway car, my interpretation of V8 supercar and all of that, but some of the much older, really mad vehicles, I no longer have. They're on different versions of the game, and I've probably cleared them out and deleted them from time to time. So, the, the fast, silly, quick hatchback, I haven't I haven't got, which is what we're going to try and do here. Now, admittedly, this one here says 2003 van. We are, I'm going to use this body type because I think this is new, and I've never had a play around with it. Um, actually, imagine that would also so some of these body types here while well, it shows the display images of a van etc that will have a hatchback as an option as uh, having never worked with this body style before i think that's going to be a good place to begin now uh panel material you know we're not going to be this isn't going to be a race car at the end of the day. i mean we could make it a full race car carbon fiber but it's not really the not really quite the plan i think we're probably going to be Probably, I'd probably go corros corrosion, sorry, corrosion resistant steel. That seems like a good way to go. Now, chassis. We are, we're going to, we're going to want to do, we're going to want a slightly better chassis than just a ladder, I think. <laughs> we're, not, we're not quite going to want to go for the full, the full space frame. We're not a truck, remember. We're not, we're not, we're not a truck here. So let's go for, yeah, a little bit lighter um, monocoque chassis. Okay, maybe a little advanced, but you know, it's fine. And uh, chassis material. I think we'll stick with the same. We'll go corrosion uh, resistant steel. Is there anything that's. I mean, that's a little bit lighter, but a bit more expensive. We can go for very light, or then you are starting to get towards, you know, no mash production and stuff. So we'll go. We'll keep with steel. Okay, engine placement. Now, I want to try and fit this all in front, transverse. Possibly we will see how it all works. I might regret this decision. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> if the engine doesn't fit, we might have to, you know, play around with it. We are going to want some sportiness at the end of the day. We do, we do want some sportiness. Uh, we don't want to go too crazy. You know, we're not going to go push rod suspension at the back of our vehicle. I think maybe if we just go double wishbone all round, fairly, you know, fairly sensible, fairly commonplace, if you like, suspension, that seems like a good idea to me. Now, the engine... We are going to go for a V8. Now, we're going to be wanting this to get a fairly alarming amount of power at the end of the day. That's the fun. Uh, <laughs> we're going to want it to have a fairly, fairly alarming amount of power. I think, we're, again, we're not going to go for, you know, just the ultimate, ultimate basics. But I think we'll go, we'll go with aluminium block and we'll probably go, or maybe we'll go cast iron block and aluminium head. Or no, we kind of want it light. We'll go cast, we'll go uh, aluminium for the whole thing. Now, we are probably going... I, I, I love making high-revving mad engines. I, I'm, I'm a big fan of having the engine being able to rev very, very high. So, <laughs> I feel like... I feel like this is probably the way to go. Uh, let's go four for now. Might change might change my mind. Might come back and uh, tinker around a little bit over here. Definitely we're going to stick with aluminium for that as well. Sure, let's have some variable valve lift on the go. I will say, unless things have changed, I am god-awful at doing economy stuff with cars. I'm very bad at economy stuff with cars. So, <laughs> we probably won't be, uh, but won't be getting much in terms of miles a gallon out of the engine. But that's fine. That's fine. We're going for the full, full forged uh, internal stuff. I think because, again, if I want RPMs to be able to go mad... Now, do we want... Maybe we'll just go with forged. We'll go with forged. We might come back and change our mind and go with lightweight forged if needed. I'm going to put all of the stuff on the engine before I do size, because I think actual physical size of engine fitting into little car is going to be a problem. Potentially. Potentially. I don't know. Do we keep it naturally aspirated? Yeah, but... 
potentially. I think we'll give it nitro aspirated for now. We'll see what power figures we come out with and if I want to whack a turbo on it for good measure. Uh, of course, we want direct injection. We're not a full-on race car, but we are a performance car, shall we say, that we have got here. And the fuel, that's what will be average in England anyway. Uh, so we'll go, with, we'll go with that. I'll fiddle around with that stuff later. We are going to want some long... I okay, want dual exhaust, long tubular exhaust. Uh, again, we'll mess around with that. It is going to be a road car, so we are going to need a catalytic converter. Is there much difference in price? No, maybe not. Uh, again, it is, it is a road car, so we're going to we're going to need some form of silencing on the exhaust. Okay, so after all of this, we've come out with a 268 horsepower engine. Now, of course, we can uh, whack that up and get... In fact, just with just changing the exhaust has got us up to about 290 horsepower, which is quite nice. We will... In fact, I'm actually kind of very, very surprised that this engine is fitting in the... This is a 4-litre V8. That is not a small engine that, <laughs> that has got into our got into our car. Uh, that is that is not a small engine at all that has got into the car. I mean, we can get well, we're gonna crack three hundred how actually how far? Oh it's gonna rev nice and high. Eight and a half thousand RPM seems about good to me. Well, we'll go eight two. Eight thousand two hundred uh, <laughs> RPM out of this. It will actually rev all the way to where does it start? It starts getting issues about nine uh, actually no, about eight and a half it actually does start getting issues well Light, light issues over... Yeah, 8.1 is probably a good place to leave it at, quite frankly. Or a nice round number of 8,000. Sure. Uh, <laughs> uh, so, what, how, what... I mean, these things are going to be kind of minimal change. We can go more aggressive. I, I don't kind of, In some ways, I don't kind of want to go too mad or aggressive. With it. Actually, the chem profile... Uh, chem profile is not changing quite as much as I was expecting. We can go for... A little bit more compression if we want to kind of crank it up towards the uh, towards the 400 horsepower mark. Oh, okay, that's that's the, that's the sort of thing that we want to be doing here. Uh, we might need to go get those lightweight. Where are my lightweight forged? Uh, no, lightweight forged. That's the ones that we want. Uh, what's that? Engine bay is quite full. You know, when you've got 400 odd horsepower coming in the vehicle, I'm not going to worry too much about the engine bay being quite full. Uh, you, oh no, you, Stephen, with the forged, I guess we could, ah, I've got to, I'm remembering my, my, um, what's it called, so if we make that shorter, but then make that bigger, so we're trying to keep this at around about a 4 litre V8, uh, as I said, I could stick a turbo, I could whack a turbo on it, I'm kind of just fancying, you know, not, so if we, actually 4.5 litres still, still kind of fits, now we'll get, stick it back to about there, so we've made the, Four longer, the stroke shorter, and that should allow us to whack up the RPM limit before it starts blowing itself to bits. So yeah, we'll actually go up to about 9,000 RPM now. <laughs> That's what we like to see. That's what we like to see indeed. And then, can we get away with... No, I... You know what? I, I don't remember well enough everything that... Uh, <laughs> this guy should probably have done a... Uh, probably have done a little bit more remembering of stuff. Christ, so we, we can kind of go quite we go just sort of full madness on this. So it's actually not the worst power band I've ever designed in a car, quite frankly. It is not the worst power band. Like, this is va even vague. Like, for me, this is a vaguely, vaguely sensible. I tend to run higher compression engines. I, it's just the way I end up building stuff on the most part. Uh, yeah, I think I'm... I'm kind of, I mean, it would be nice to get 500 horsepower, but, <laughs> like, I, I think it's in some, in some respects, we get a little bit, maybe not caught up, but uh, it is easy to see 500 horsepower these days, and that's actually not that much power when you look at, you know, most supercars and whatnot are putting out absurdo levels of power, and 500 horsepower going through the front wheels is ridiculous. <laughs> So there we go. Right, let's go and give this a bit of a test. I forgot how noisy the game was. Oh, we're gonna have a good sounding hatchback. A 
been definitely a good sounding hatchback. That, <laughs> that is a... Uh, if that sound came out of a hatchback, that would be one impressive and meaty hatchback. I'm, I'm liking it. I'm, I'm liking it. 471 horsepower it will uh, get up to here. Okay. That is that is our engine sorted. So, as, as I said, you can have the sedan version of the car. There is even an estate version of this, which is always, always good. And then you have got the two or four door hatchback variant. I'm going to go with the four door hatchback, I think. Uh, we could, actually, I could have gone up the quality side. I tend to leave the quality side as in the middle just for, for money uh, sake. That is, engine bay is very full, so it's fine. Engine bay is very full, but it will be very full. Naturally, we've got to go in Fail Race Orange, and here we are. Things have changed a little bit since I last played this game. We've got some new, well, some new tools. For example, let's just grab us a pair of headlights here. Uh, you can now do flip vertically if you want stuff to be upside down. You can do flip horizontally. Uh, so rather than fiddling around with this bit that can sometimes be a little bit awkward, or you can rotate. Okay, maybe not where these are positioned. You can't rotate them 90 degrees. But uh, you can. You can rotate stuff uh, <laughs> 90 degrees if you so wish. Kind of, it's currently looking a little bit like that. Was it a Saturn? Is it a Saturn that had these lights? If I could get the lights to curve in the right way, you could sort of make it look like the Saturn... I want to say sky, but I probably don't... I probably don't remember. Uh, <laughs> I'm afraid... Is that what this body style is supposed to be? I'm not, I'm not entirely sure at all, but yeah, th those headlights very, very much remind me of a Saturn of some description. But what is going to look? Not 100% sure what is going to look good on, on, on this body style. It's kind of a bit of a interesting front shape to work with here. I, I quite like it as a, as a style. It's a little bit of a, perhaps a little bit more of a difficult one to work with. It's kind of quite beaky. And I hope that may <laughs> hope that makes sense. I don't think anybody has ever described a car in that manner before, ever. However, it kind of kind of got a beak at the front, so I kind of quite like having the angular, angly, ang. You know what I mean? Look, you didn't come here for good English. You came here for badly designed cars with a silly engine. Uh, at least I hope so. Otherwise, you're going to be sorely disappointed if you were expecting good. Oh, we've got to keep. We. <laughs> I've got silly ideas, god damn it. No. <laughs> We've got to keep with the whole beak theme going on with this. Oh, it's all going downhill. <laughs> it's all going down. I've, all, I've got a little bit silly immediately. I mean, not that that's unusual, but I got quite a bit silly immediately. Can we fit a grill in there? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm keeping. I'm keeping with the beak theme. God damn it! I know it's a bit silly. Uh, let's get, let's get some side vents. You see, I'm the more I played around. I say the more I played around this game. When I tend to play around this game, I end up building. I end up building like front grills in a fairly similar manner. We go for little side pods. That's going to look like a Civic. Uh, we have little, quite big side pods. We have side pods, and then we have like a center, center um, bit. I guess it tends to be this one because I kind of I like this one here because it matches up quite like it matches up quite nicely with the uh, side pods that I tend to end up running. It also doesn't make the car look like it's got a tremendous grin constantly. So <laughs> yeah, maybe we're these ones here a little bit. No, can we select? Excuse me. Yes, I'm happy with that. Can we select? Okay, I'm apparently happy. Apparently, I'm not happy with that. Can we select that just to make that the same height. Uh, maybe a teensy bit smaller. Perfect. Does actually kind of look a little. It kind of reminds me of the the Civic Coupe sort of thing. We didn't get those over in England, but I've seen it in Forza essentially at the front. Okay, so the beak is ready. The beak is done, and this is the bit like I'm not the most amazing person when it comes to build. I'm not the most amazing person when it comes to building. Full stop. I'm not the most creative person when it comes to these vehicles designing. But you've got a lot of freedom in here. Just for example, let's take one of these grills here. Uh, so you can control the material of the, you know, of whatever it is that you are that you are building. So you can have like little bits of carbon fiber trim if you want, or you can create uh, all sorts of different shapes and so on. Really change the look of a vehicle. I, as I said, I'm not exactly great with all of that, but you can do an awful lot with the with the customization. Shall we have a giant bonnet scoop on the uh, or like a shaker hood? I mean, it is a V8 technically. Uh, <laughs> 
<laughs> it is. It is. It has got a V8 in it. So I mean, a shaker hood is kind of, kind of, you know, supposed to be a thing. Perfect. Uh, so I was at Jumpfest a couple of well, on the weekend, the weekend gone, and I was seeing some of the. Uh, was the Nissan Pulsars with their million vents and nostrils. It's a strange looking bonnet. Like, it's a really, really cool car. It's a really cool car. Don't get me wrong, I absolutely love them. They're, they're madly expensive these days, but they are very, very cool. But you've got about... Well, you've just got so much in terms of vents uh, going on there. Uh, do we want to have... Oh, no, definitely not like that. I kind of wanted to have that, but in a slightly... There we go. Slightly different, maybe, material actually sure uh, but yeah we'll go for the full we could go for the full uh pulsar style bonnet almost no i'm not gonna do that i'm not gonna do that to this uh right uh, i've got completely completely distractoed tail lights yes i did spot while having a quick flick through here we finally got tower tail lights I'm so glad we finally got tower tail lights i actually don't think the tower tail lights are going to fit very well on this car uh Typically, but these are now a thing. These are not a mod. These are now a thing in the game. Uh, there are also actually different shapes as well around here now for your for your brake lights, tail lights, however you want to call them. Annoyingly, I don't think I'm going to have any that really quite. I mean, these kind of fit. Can we have those? Just, uh, slight, actually, no. Tell a lie. I, I stand corrected. I'm just pratting around with sizing, and I've got to a point that I quite like. That actually works. It looks vaguely okay. Shall we get some number plates on the car? Uh, well, I mean, we're going to be... Sport, I guess. Uh, <laughs> certainly not elite. We're definitely not eco, because I don't do eco. I'm terrible at eco. We are... We are sportmobile. We are the ultimate sportmobile. Oh, okay, that's their fixed size, apparently. Uh, <laughs> we are the ultimate, ultimate sportmobile. I mean, it's the ultimate, the ultimate sleeper sportmobile is what it is here. Uh, will it fit on there? Can we make? I just need to make you a tiny. Okay, you can make a tiny bit sport, smaller. So there we go. Sportmobile at the front. There we go. That's the back. We're gonna want probably something. Maybe we keep with the uh, the old beaky theme at the back. No. <laughs> No, maybe, maybe not. Uh, what do we want at the... I'm never really sure what to do at the back of cars, I'm going to be honest. Never never really quite sure uh, what to do on the back here. Maybe we'll just go for like a smaller... Kind of a, a smaller replica of what we do at the front. Or maybe we do that and then we get some... Some exhaust. We can actually, of course... I keep, I keep, I'm kind of I'm used to the old versions where we had to put the exhaust in the... Uh, kind of in the bodywork and now we don't have to do that anymore so there we go we'll get a couple of exhausts up there and i might i might just finish off the bottom of the car with some of these as well although let's go and make them again i'll try and make them roughly the same height so they don't look too terrible there we go that's actually not you know it's not the worst it's not the worst designed car i've ever built Yes, it's quite beaky at the front, and yes, it's got a shaker hood, but that is for important reasons. Okay, wing mirrors. We need some of these. We need door handles. We need fuel cap, etc. Uh, should we go for some? Should we go for some nice, small, sleek-looking wing mirrors? Let's put them on from the other side, otherwise they face the wrong way. Uh, actually, do need them to be a usable size, though. Something like that. Yeah. Fairly happy with that one. Door handles, we are going to need. Kind of important thing, otherwise you can't get in the car. What sort of style do we want? Just sort of straightforward, straightforward, no nonsense. Door handles is the way to go. Uh, on here, I kind of want it to look as as normal as possible, and then you have a 500 horsepower near enough V8 under the bonnet. Do we get a mighty wing? Can we get a mighty wing even to fit on the back of it? I mean, we could. We could get a mighty wing to fit on the... Oh, Christ, we could get a very mighty wing to fit on the back of it. Uh, okay, maybe not quite like that. Uh, <laughs> I mean, yeah, we can get a mighty wing on it. <laughs> oh, bloody hell. <laughs> 
Do you want a wing bigger than your car? If the answer is yes, Ferraris Industries is here to help you. Okay, the wings have got mad in terms of size. Is there... A, it's always difficult getting a kind of wing to sit on. Uh, on a hatchback, is difficult at the best of times, but on a hatchback that is this sort of shape, this has got really no... No real positioning for a uh, for a wing. I mean, that's... <laughs> that's a that's a way to do it. That is a way to do it. I guess you could kind of. Oh, I wonder if. So something that you can do that I always forget about is you can have these bits. Now it might. Oh dear, someone's mail. Okay, yeah, but <laughs> you can have. So you can get sort of these front lips. Now the the front lips will sit on the cars actually pretty nicely. If you well, maybe not if you if you don't make it. Sp uh, yeah, these can fit on the cars pretty nicely. Uh, I've never really got like the uh, spoiler bit to quite work out uh, as well on the car. I wondered if I could have used one of these. I don't actually like that lip. Typically, I faffed about trying to get it to uh, to sit neatly, and then I didn't like it in the end. Uh, wow, that's a. Uh, um, it might um, maybe if we can actually center it enough in there we can have a big old oh, wobbly wobbly lip on the front of the car that might be a little bit too extreme god damn it because <laughs> i have i have built cars with these and they do actually look pretty good when on some cars when sorted when fitted perfectly i think it's going to have to sit a little bit like that it's not quite going to sit as neatly. I think it just adds something to the front. I kind of like it on the front of the car. Yeah, spoiler doesn't quite work, so we're not really going to be able to have a spoiler on the car. Sadly, well, unless you want to really, like, the, the maddest, silliest of mighty wings. Uh, let's get a little shark fin on our vehicle. Uh, I like that stuff snaps to a, a centre line. That's quite helpful, because I'm terrible at lining stuff up. So the, the snapping is very, very useful. I apologise for the commotion you can probably hear going on outside. Typically, as I start to record, well, as I'm recording, the bin men turn up, but there we go. Uh, where was the Ferraris Industries badge? It was one of these, wasn't it? I, <laughs> especially considering the vehicle, especially considering the look of the vehicle, we've got to have... Uh, this wasn't the Ferraris Industries badge, but it is going to be from now on. We've got to have good old Beaky on the front and good old Beaky on the back. Perfect. And again, if you want to get into all of your uh, details when it comes to customizing your car, you know, trim levels and whatnot, you have got plenty of little little badges that can be used. So I'm going to talk over the horrendous rackets going on, and I can't do anything about it. I <laughs> do apologize. If it's not the cats, it's something else. But uh, yeah, you can sort of spell out your own custom badges if you if you want to get into all of that level of detail. There we go. That's the that's kind of the the look of the stuff. We are going to be front wheel drive. Uh, we are going. Oh, okay. No, it's going to sort itself out. Perfect. We're going to be manual, naturally, six speed gearbox. Uh, it reckons it's top speed, 190. So we're going to give it gearing to do it. We might see if we can crack 200. Uh, <laughs> We are probably going to want an electronic LSD to deal with whatever the hell is going on in the front of the car. It's going to have a panic attack, I think. Uh, so we will go with that. We are going to want some... Um, we're going to want drive. We're going to want drivability, but we are going to want also some sportiness. It's a road car. Let's go medium on this. We're probably going to want some big tyres. Let's be honest here. We're probably going to want some big tyres. Oh, I forgot to actually ping out bits of the bodywork completely... Completely and utterly forgot about that. Can we do it from here? Or maybe I can't do it now. Huh, there used to be a way to I say there used to be a way. I, I saw it earlier. Apparently I'm apparently I'm incompetent, but there we go. We already knew that. So yeah, two five fives at the front, uh two two one fives at the rear, fairly small tires for a car of this power, but you know, it'll do. We'll go with some alloy wheels. Uh, ooh, I, oh, I forgot about the... If you want to go fix your stuff, for the wheels, you've got to do the wheels in here. Do we have any more wheels that I like? Or am I going to continue to use the same wheels that I have always tended to use? Probably... Probably them. Uh, go for... God, they are... They are not the prettiest wheels. They certainly do not certainly do not suit this car. That is for sure. Anyway, that'll do. That's all fine. Wheels will do that for now. We might have to come back. 
possibly probably going to want big brakes at the front i'm not gonna lie probably you're probably gonna want some massive brakes at the front i'm not sure we're quite gonna go with the full-on i mean we're probably probably would need carbon ceramic brakes we're gonna go with big vented discs all around i think maybe go for a little bit bigger brakes at the back because it always looks silly when you have huge wheels and tiny brakes uh, <laughs> God damn it. Go to 60-40 just for even numbers. Right. Under tray, we're going to probably want... Okay, we're not going to go crazy expensive or crazy engineering time because it's going to be uh, another 100. Uh, not going to have active aero on the car. It's not got anything aero-wise for to be active, shall we say. Uh, let's... Ooh. Okay, this is where things get expensive. I guess we'll go premium. You know, it's... Uh, you, you're not going to be buying a V8... A V8 hatchback just on a whim, are you? You're going to expect a little bit of something about it. It's not going to be a cheap, cheap car, is it? I mean, there'll be a basic model with, you know, your your standard four-cylinder, but the V8 version has got to come with some 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 decent some decent stuff. Uh, we're going to want... I mean, we want sportiness to be positive, really. Variable hydraulic? Yeah, let's go for that. You're probably going to want... I'm not going to lie, you're probably going to want some of this. Uh, <laughs> I guess that's a, that's a lot of car for most people to try and handle. We're also going to have some advanced safety because someone's going to bin it in a wall. I'm, I'm very, very confident someone's going to bin it in a wall. And shall we go for active some active suspension? Yeah, we're go, we're, I mean, it's kind of like a modern, a, a modern take. Fairly modern take. Uh, utility Sport Luxury, a premium car that is large, prestigious, comfortable, powerful, and has some utility. Uh, that's kind of it. Family Sport Premium, Utility Sport Premium. That's kind of what we were going for, roughly, in that sort of an area. Uh, the car tends to oversteer. <laughs> I'm very surprised by that. The car terminally oversteers. I think it's because I've got tiny, tiny, piddly rear tyres, essentially. Uh, I wish I could figure out how the bloody hell... I can pull out the body, make the arches wider so that we can get the bigger wheels. I like I was doing it earlier. I don't know whether it's just because I've stuck stuff on the car and once you put fixtures on, that's it. You can't continue. And I don't want to go and do something. Okay, we've we've got quite a lot we've got quite a lot of oversteer. We've got quite a lot of oversteer on our car. Because it's got I mean it stops it having crippling understeer, I guess, at the end of the day. Rear, uh, the rear dampers are hard, so consider reducing damper stiffness at the rear. Now, that is something that we can do. Uh, dampers at the rear. Does that make it better? Yes. That makes think that makes numbers happy. Numbers happy is good. good. Okay, so it's also kind of technically a muscle car, apparently. The <laughs> <laughs> uh, the engine bay is very full, can't do it. Brakes suffer from brake fade, reducing drivability. Try to increase brake size. So they were complaining about the brake size, and then they're saying they're concerned about the rear brake size being too big. Maybe it was the front. It must be just the fronts that we were. We have six pistons. There we go. That's good. And then if we stick that up, no. Okay, so that's not so good. It doesn't like it doesn't like rear brakes. It doesn't want rear brakes. It wants front brakes. And that's kind of fair enough. Oh, we're now to ninety three. Okay, there was about the sweet spot, I think. There, perfect. Okay, front brake force is high compared to the grid. Look, it needs it. It was happy with that. Stop telling me off. Uh, <laughs> stiffer sway bars. Let's have a little quick tweak with this. Uh, no, apparently not stiffer sway bars at the rear, though. Stiffer sway bars at the front, maybe? No. That puts... It puts up drivability... Oh, it's, it's turning down utility sport. Oh, and then we suddenly clonk to massive understeer. So this is kind of slight oversteer, then sudden clonk to understeer. Probably safer that way, let's be honest. I mean, we're sitting around the 93, the high 90s on a lot of different, uh, <laughs> a lot of different areas. Economy is terrible. Economy is utterly garbage, but I always make my cars like that because I like to have fun with silly vehicles. It's also quite heavy at nearly two tonnes. Uh, <laughs> which probably won't help. Market-wise... Uh, we are good, as I said, utility sport premium, utility sport luxury, family sport, and as a muscle car, it works. I mean, it's probably not the cheapest of cars. It works. It works very well in Fruinia. It's very good here as a utility sport luxury. I guess, you know, that makes sense. At the end of the day, it is a, and it is a family sport premium, you know. It's a top-of-the-line 
fast vehicle while still being slightly practical. Um, of course, we can't go in Arcana because they've got dodgy fuel. We can't run the car in it. Uh, it's actually very popular here as a fun car, as a fun budget car. They must have... I mean, <laughs> they, they must have some seriously expensive cars if this is a fun budget car. I mean, it's, it's pretty good. Like, when I'm seeing a lot of green, that, 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 that's, that, that to me is good news. It's almost a, it's a GT car over here. Uh, <laughs> what is it? I, mean, I guess it was a GT car in Gasmere as well. I don't pay much attention to that, but it is a GT car over in Gasmere. Uh, let's take it to the to the test track, of course. Uh, 195 miles an hour, it'll be doing 60 in 5 seconds, considering it's front-wheel drive and not very clever. Uh, <laughs> I will take that. So, let's go. That is not the sound that should come out of a hatchback. But, there we go. Yeah, I have no doubt with a little bit of uh, tinkering around with the suspension with the settings and so I didn't think you'd get a much faster one but this is going to be my beaky car uh, <laughs> and come on lap time I don't have top gear I should have remembered to load up a, a list of the top gear lap times to see where our front wheel drive V8 monster ish monster uh, would end up what was that a 123 Point five. That is a pretty quick lap time, if I remember correctly. Hold on a second. My phone is uh, my phone is loading. Uh, it is going to be. Come on, phone. Come on, phone. How have we got? There we go. We've got a list of times. Doesn't go down far enough. God damn it. Uh, <laughs> showing at Honda NSX, which is fine and everything, but the, the NSX was, you know, fairly. I can't even find anything. I can't even find something that's going further down to a, a lower point. Uh, <laughs> I don't remember how I used to find it. A, a Caterham, actually, a Ferrari LaFerrari did a 114. So, I mean, we're 10, 11 seconds, no, 9 seconds, sorry, down on a LaFerrari, which, considering, considering we're at a front wheel drive hatchback, that's pretty good, pretty good going. A Ferrari F12 did a 117. So. <laughs> That is our our little hatchback. That is our mad, mad vehicle. <laughs> I look forward to driving it. I very much look forward to testing it out with its many power. It's quite heavy and front wheel drive, I don't know what could possibly go wrong with 470 horsepower of quite high revving V8 goodness. But, I mean, sounds like fun, really. Sounds, actually kind of looks a little bit like a Master 3 as well, I've just realised from the, kind of with the grill, with the grill and everything, it's, it's sort of a little bit mastery with its shaker hood as well, but we'll, we'll not worry too much about that, but... <laughs> there we go, our V8 hatchback. Our V8 hatchback is... Ready to go. God knows how it's going to end up driving when I do get the chance to do that. That'll be it, though, for this video. Thank you very much for watching, and until next time, a uh, goodbye.